to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. With your host, Kamen Neutron. Broadcasting from a secret underground lair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A gigantic middle finger to everything that is rock about music, rock and roll, and cover power. The thing is, though... If you don't laugh, you're going to go on a killing spree to shop and nail it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Confidence of a hero or a fool, I wasn't exactly certain which. Could not be more professional. It's all that you still go my life to. That's okay. It means something. It means something. My take on it. Wait, what's yours? Protonic Reversal! That's like a science thing, right? Indeed, indeed, indeed. It is a science thing. It is a science place. It is a scientific fact that we are all up in your face. It is time once again for the one, the only... Protonic Reversal. Welcome to it. Got a good episode tonight. This is none other than Mr. Jared Warren, a uh, guy I like quite a bit. All his bands are great, all his mini bands. A lot of people know him from Carp. Incredible band. Uh, folks know him, of course, from the mighty big business. who are continually doing awesome stuff. All the time, Always. Some folks know him from Type Rose from way back when. Often forgotten about. Big rock and roll band. Killer stuff. And there are those that know him from The Whip, which recently has had a reissue. And uh, it's pretty awesome. So we're going to talk about all that stuff. So very excited for this. Very excited for you to hear from Jared. He doesn't do this kind of thing a lot, so I don't t- I don't take it lightly. Let's put it that way. I don't take it lightly. So real quick before we do that, house cleaning. Uh, again, thanks everyone for all the, the show the sport's gotten recently. It's awesome. Really appreciate everybody sharing the episodes around, all that good stuff. Patreon.com slash Reversal if you want these episodes sooner. Otherwise, pretty pretty straightforward. RadioNeutron.com for the archives. They uh, they gradually get there. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a while. Um, do, 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 do. Anything else? I think that's it. Just thanks. Just a, a general thanks. And let's hear... Uh, Let's hear some music for our guest. Let's do something about the whip record. This is Freelance Liaison. It goes like this.
That's right. That was a little uh, the whip action. And with us now, we have none other than the, the man himself, Jared Warren. Jared, how are you, man? Hello. I am a man myself. <laughs> you are a man. <laughs> All by myself. It's 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 uh you you can be a myth you can be a legend and you can also just be a man and all those things can be true at the same time. Uh, yeah, totally. It's good talking to you, man. Good to, good to talk to you too. How are you? Uh, getting by in this quarantine times. How are you? Uh, how are you getting through with this quarantine stuff, man? How are you holding up? Uh, okay, all things considered. Um, yeah, it's a heavy time for sure. Uh, we have a couple, my wife and I have a couple small children and a kind of small house, so that can be kind of intense <laughs> at times. Yeah, not a lot of time um, for uh, much anything, I would imagine. Not so much. We're very fortunate to have a, 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 little, a little backyard area, so there is like outdoor time available, um, but it's pretty hot here right now. Uh, so everybody's inside. Yeah. So has it been kind of bizarre to try to sort of explain why things are different right to, now? to my children? Yeah. Uh, not so much. Um, my daughter, she is six and goes to kindergarten, and my son is three and uh, he was going to preschool. Um, right. So for him, it's not. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what his grasp of time is or it doesn't seem that he's he's uh, seems completely aware of, of the situation but um or or cares for that matter uh, my daughter <laughs> right yeah also important <laughs> yeah but my my daughter is, is is she's doing okay she's doing some you know kind of hacking her way through some homeschool stuff like you know bits and pieces of video um learning and kind of meets up with her teacher a couple times a week and on, you know, via zoom or whatever. Right. Um, she misses her friends of course. And so that's kind of a big deal. Um, but she's doing okay. We, we, we talk about it pretty frequently and make sure she doesn't have any, um, you know, lingering questions or, or you know, is anything she's scared of. We try to address it in a, pretty direct way um, yeah i mean it's a scary time just for adults alone for kids <laughs> yeah it is it's, <laughs> it's, 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 point on it but you know hey. no it's legitimate though it's difficult to kind of keep a uh you know you have to keep things upbeat and keep things keep things cool you know um as as the adults in the house so we, and it can there are definitely moments you know that are pretty difficult or just hearing something on the radio or getting new news, you know, but more bad news. It's just, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really uh, anything that's good where you're like, Oh, I'm no, so glad I listened to that. It's like, Oh no, that's terrible too. Okay. No. Yeah. I definitely went through a period, you know, where I stopped listening, you know, I stopped listening to the news, stopped reading the news and, you know, really delved in, I think this is the pattern for a lot of people kind of got into projects, you know, mm -hmm. that you could, that you have access to. And so I just did that for a couple of weeks and that was great. Got a lot of stuff done around the house, built a bunk bed for my kids, um, built a numerous forts for them as well. Um, and you know, kind of just some regular home stuff, but kind of ran out of stuff like that to do. And now it's kind of back to the Right, because it's sort of like, at least the stuff you're mentioning is all like very uh, achievable stuff. Yeah. Whereas folks are like, oh, I'm going to learn Esperanto. And it's like, really? Are you, though? I mean, <laughs> that may yeah, not be yeah, the best sure. goal to set for yourself. Uh, yeah, I got into some stuff like, you know, I, I you know, started baking sourdough bread like every other asshole and, you know, just doing stuff that like trying to do something with very little yeah. and, and, uh, making your hands busy and your mind busy and whatever. But every day you wake up and it's the same realization, right? It takes yeah. a second to sink in and then you realize, Oh yeah, it's this again today. Still. It's like the movie groundhog's uh -huh. day, except for we're all doing it now. Yeah. Which is kind of the only, I don't I'm not. I guess it's a comfort that everybody's doing it. I kind of feel like it is. 
I don't, I mean, I don't get behind the, you know, we are American, we're all in this together sort of, sort of vibe, but, uh, but you know, it, it is a fact that everybody is, is immersed in this one way or another. Yeah. And I, I found that it has been like, there's some comfort to that. Like there's some comfort to the fact that like, Hey, this blows, but at least it blows for everybody. Like it's <laughs> like, it's, everybody's getting some, <laughs> like everybody's got this like kind of resting state of anxiety and, and, and like kind of like low grade depression and like unease and yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's, you know, it doesn't make it better. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. But we're all in it together. We're we can all together. have a patch. <laughs> At the end, we'll all get a patch and a merit badge. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so one nice thing has been uh, this this whip issue of, of the record. Like there, there's uh-huh. sort of like the lost. The lost band of the Jared, War- Jared Warren discography for a lot of folks that either people were just less aware of or maybe didn't know about at all. Uh, sure. Awesome it's certainly less, oh, yeah, cool. less known. Um, it's awesome. It, it, it's a great package. It, I think it really does a service to the band and to that time period. And I, I really enjoyed uh, the liner notes that you did oh, as thank well. You. I thought they were very well done and kind of put the focus on, you know, really uh, like all the awesome positive things that that band brought in. I know that was kind of a long time coming though, just to put it bluntly, right? The, the, the record itself. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yes. And I, and I should note, I should mention that, uh, uh, the only reason this really came out was because of Josh, Josh Vanix, yeah. uh, gentle perseverance, gentle nudging and, He's a very kind man. He's a very patient man, um, and he's very passionate about music. And I, I thank him for keeping on my ass uh, about this for many years <laughs> until uh, he he finally uh, uh, he broke me and he forced me to do the things I was supposed. I said I was going to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's sort of like a, he's kind of like quietly relentless. Right, like that's the, like the best way to put it. Like it's sort of like he's not a dick about it at all. But no, he definitely not at doesn't. All. You know, he's he's got that. Hey, man, I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep on with this. Can we can we and do he, this now? And he, yes, and 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 I kept saying yes, and then it was you know like new updates are ready for your computer. Do you want to install them now? <laughs> of course I do. Remind me tomorrow, and then you push remind me tomorrow, and then the next day, like, hey. These updates are still here. I mean, that's that's not a very kind uh, comparison. <laughs> Josh is not a. Uh, He's better than the Josh Windows is not updater, a robot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is not a computer. He is a real human being with a very kind heart and uh, a very real brain with real emotions. But also, I, I get what you're saying that it's something that you know needs to happen. But you're like, oh sure, yeah, let's do that. Sure, yeah, and then you know, ah, not right now though. We'll do that later. And then it's, yeah. You, you, it later becomes later and later and later and yes josh and i are, are, are friends we've known each other for a very long time um we both used to live in, in olympia uh, at the same time for many years um I, I was i was more friends with his brothers but uh but got to know josh later um uh and uh, uh i i've 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 never talked to him he's also a parent and I, i'm very curious about given what I know about him and my relationship with him and, and, you know, my business dealings with him. Mm. Um, I'm so curious about his, I've seen him interact with his children, but I am curious about his like parenting style when it comes to things like that. You sure you don't want to clean up your room? You want to make sure you want to clean up your room? Yeah. yeah. (laughs) We were talking about last time we talked, we talked about cleaning up your room. And I wonder if maybe you want to clean up your room today. And if that works like with his, I don't know. He's an incredibly patient man. He rules, and I, I thank him very much for, for making it happen, because I'm really glad it did happen. Yeah, I, I can actually say that I had a brief, uh, wasn't playing, but just going through Missoula, and like, hey, man, you know, we haven't hung out in a while. Like, and he's like, oh, come, you know, come over for dinner. Just, you know, my, my kids are going to be around. I'm like, oh, okay. So I did. I got to see it, and it, it wasn't yeah. that far off from what you said. Yeah, it was very... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty close, I would say. Yeah. Pretty close. So, the 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 record as it is is a collection of different recording sessions. There's the the initial seven inch uh, that you know the one from from way back, 
uh, mm -hmm. that you know, if most people probably know it from the internet, but it's you know, a, a seven inch. I think I gave you the master tapes for that back at some point because they ended up with me. You uh, did, yes, thank you. Eventually, <laughs> punk rock well, was Express not you. is not quick, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then there's also the ses session you did, the other session that you did, there's some live stuff. It's sort of it, it's meant to be. A compendium for a band that didn't really get to do all the things that maybe everyone thought it was going to be able to do. And Correct. I felt like it was a very, as, as someone that has some degree of context for it, I felt like it was a very worthy and cool entry in, into the world that kind of does give you a window into where things were there. But you know, there's a lot of memories that went with that as well. And I, I don't necessarily want to dance around the issue, but there's a pretty definitive reason as anyone who's ever seen the, you know, the carp documentary knows or knows anything about history that a huge part of that band, a huge part of, of your musical discography and world was Scotty. Mm -hmm. And when Scotty passed, it was abrupt. To say the least. To say the least. And disruptive in, in every possible way. Uh, and, yes. and, and I want to be sensitive about this because I think you, you've been, you know, you just going through it is, is enough. But, I mean, this was something where you were picking back up with Scotty with the whip. Post-carp. Uh, I believe you, you've been doing type rows for a bit at that point, right? If I remember correctly, if I remember the timeline. Yeah. I think, yes. And... You guys were just kind of spinning up. You were you're, you're just spinning up. You were you were you were playing some hell ass shows. They were awesome, and it it just was just such so devastating. Like ultimately, just like like it seems like the world was ending, like devastating at the time. And uh, I mean, that's a lot to go through. It is. Even if you're even if the music and band pieces of it are like not part of it, it's a lot to go through. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, what did this bring up? I mean, obviously, lots of memories come through when you put together something like this. What kind of stuff went through your head when you were like listening to these old recordings? Like, did it, did it was it like time travel? Did it take you back in time that way, or was it uh, something where it just seemed like something that was happening to someone else? Or what's where was your process through kind of working through all this material and having it slowly compiled like this? Uh, well, um, one of the reasons it took so long for this to come out was because of that. Or, or just I, was, I wasn't <clears throat> uh, super excited about writing lighter notes for this record. Yeah, but I wanted fucking I, heavy, dude. I mean, like, honestly, like, not to, not to interrupt, but I mean, it's... I, I could, I don't blame you. It's fucking heavy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, uh, enough time has passed, I guess. And I, I was, um, able to do it through a perspective that I felt more comfortable writing it from or being in a, in a, a space that was, uh, more comfortable for me or easier to to approach um so yeah it took a long time and part of <clears throat> part of the reason i think josh is, is because I, I think josh is because of his uh his gentle perseverance is that he was very you know um he waited a really long time for me to <laughs> hand in uh, liner notes or just, or even just kind of get it together. You know, I, 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 ultimately it wasn't that, that big of a project. Um, Josh did, you know, a lot of the footwork and collecting, getting things together. And, and uh, but I had to, you know, I did have to dig through some stuff that I wasn't yeah. super excited to dig through or, or just, both you know tangible things and in, in my brain so <laughs> yeah, I, I, and, and emotionally too <laughs> yeah yeah and so it was it was you know and because it was so long ago at this point you know i've moved my life is totally different things are in different pieces you know bits and pieces are in different boxes and different parts of the world and, you know it's, yeah. it's just a lot to kind of gather and but i also wanted to 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 um 
put something to your make sure it was all there or just, I, didn't, I didn't want to half-ass it i didn't want it to be just like uh, just kind of farted out or i wanted to <clears throat> respect it and respect scott's memory and respect the band's um memory and what it was to <clears throat> excuse me to to scott and joe and myself to be in that band together and our friendship and all that so that took you know it took some time i guess or just to be in the right headspace to do that and then kind of once i started things really started rolling last year where things started getting you know okay we have all the music together okay we have the old artwork okay we have this we just need to kind of um put it all into motion and um both joe and myself really dragged our feet um but eventually you know once it got masked like once there was a sequence and a master to listen to. Um, yeah, I mean, it was it, it definitely brought up a lot of a lot of memories. Um, most of them good though, because it was a really fun band to be in. Um, it was, you know, getting to play with Joe and and Scott, and just to hang out with those guys is was a lot. You know, a lot of a right. lot of fun. So. Yeah, like like I was a little bit. I was a little bit too late to the carp train. Like I just wasn't, you know, whatever. Didn't, didn't work at a record store early enough or <laughs> lived in a <laughs> shitty part of California. Like for whatever reason, by the time I got into carp, it was, you know, pretty much all, all over. Uh, did you even have a white belt, dude? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> the, and the, uh, but the thing that, uh, bowled me over with the whip shows of which I got, I got to see plenty of, it was, just that it was a real like celebratory like lively experience like it was and that's you know whatever most bands should be that hopefully but there was something special about uh you and scotty playing together and joe just slotted in with it so naturally and it was such a cool thing to see and i think when you hear things like that queen cover that you guys did that that is on the record Mm. like you get like a glimpse of what that was and why this was like you know why this was devastating on many different levels, uh, of, of course, the human cost being the the, the biggest thing of, of it. But like it was, it gives you a, a small snippet of the band. And for me, it was sort of like it, it was a bit like time travel too. Like, oh man, I yeah, I remember Christ, I remember them like playing this, you know. But I think it's something that it's it's strong enough and has like the music has enough vitality that it, it gets across what that band was like very effectively and that's hard man that's a hard thing to to thread I, i'm not saying it's like you know yeah it would have been better if you guys could have you know buckled down and made a real record blah 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 etc cetera, etc cetera. <laughs> you know i'm not saying any of that it, it, it's just i think it's a, it's it's kind of an astounding thing because usually with this kind of stuff it's like okay cool yeah you we'll see what you know see see what this is but you get like a kind of snapshot of like a lot of the stuff that you guys did and it gives you gives people a glimpse and it's it's man, that's that doesn't happen that often. Especially well, for that's cool. bands that in this way. So I appreciate that. I, I'm glad that I'm glad that all comes through. That's good to good to know. It felt that way when we were when we were a band. Uh, yeah. So the with the whip, then after that, I know you you kind of you didn't really play for a while. It was it was sort of something where you were you weren't playing. I mean, why? It, how could? Yeah, you? it was. It wasn't that long on. Um, in retrospect, um, it wasn't. It was like less than a year before before Cody and I started playing. Well, hey man, it seems like it's been together. more than a year since this morning. So you know, time's relative. <laughs> It is relative, and actually, I didn't realize that until I had until I was doing kind of digging in with the whip stuff and going through a timeline and trying to remember stuff. Where and yeah, and I realized there 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 hadn't been really that much time. Um, it had only been really, I don't know, it's like six months or something before. And then Cody asked me to call, you know, called me up and asked me if I wanted to to play to play some music and I didn't have anything else going on. So I don't know at the time, you know, I was much younger and, uh, it probably seemed like a longer time 
yeah. amount of time at the time. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, it was good to get back, get back on the horse. And would you, and we, uh, you, you might have told me this already. I can't remember, but did you originally envision it as a two piece the way you guys started or just kind of end up being that way? No, we, he, we just started playing together and we, you know, we, the first few practices we had, um, we came up, you know, with a couple, couple few songs or a couple few riffs anyway. And that was fun enough. Um, and we, we did intend to have a guitar player or somebody, you know, somebody else, a third person anyway. Um, and then we just kind of didn't really, we, we asked a couple people and then there was some, like a couple of people from, excuse me, out of town and it just didn't work out like logistically. And it was just, we were too, you know, it was seemed to be working out fine as a two piece. Mm-hmm. And so we just stayed, we just like, well, fuck it. We'll just do that. <clears throat> if we want to get a guitar player later, we will. And we did. And then we decided not to have one anymore. And we don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, was, it didn't seem like it was, from the outside perspective, it was like, oh, okay, cool. Oh, oh okay, also cool. You know, it, 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 it worked. It all it all worked and didn't seem like the vision was uh, sacrificed or, or, or left wanting at any moment in time, which is oh. another rare feat because, you know, sometimes bands, the, the alchemy can be very delicate and you have to be careful. But with you guys, it seems to have... I mean, I honestly... You know, a lot of people will BS about this kind of stuff, but I think like one your last record is one of your best. It's fucking awesome, man. Wow, thanks. I agree. Yeah, well, you're supposed to. That's what everyone says, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as we're all saying what everybody's supposed to be saying, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> no, but it's it's something where, and especially when you when you guys kind of came out of the. You know, bell bell rang. You kind of came out swinging, and it's kind of weird to think about how there was like a there was like two piece mania for a while, which was a very weird time yes. in music. Like, like it's sort of like trying to yes, explain that was. now, and people are like, "Wait, what? What do you mean?" It's like, no, there was just there was a lot of two piece bands. <laughs> well, there were a lot of celebrated two piece bands. Yeah, that's maybe the, the it, better it way was, to put it. Yeah, bigger bands. Yeah. I, I, you know, it was the White Stripes, it was Death From Above, Lightning Bolt, um, who else was, you know, or the, the blues, or the blues guys, uh, the, uh, Blues Brothers, no, I'm, shit, uh, the, the, the Black, Black Keys, the Black, Black Keys, <laughs> the Blues uh, Brothers, <laughs> professional radio uh, show, yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, so yeah, there were a bunch of, you know, when, at the time, when that was happening, when we would go on tour, it would be, you know, for fans of, like, big business, playing wherever, for fans of the White Stripes. You know, all, it was always <laughs> right. just, like... These bands you have nothing why? How is sonically that nothing, in common with at all. Nothing but, sonically yeah. in common with. <laughs> and just, just so lazy. Or, yeah. Or we'd be, you know, on a really good bill, you'd get compared to, you know, two two-piece bands. Then you knew, then you knew the person was really lazy. <laughs> Taking it to a new know. level. <laughs> well, so can I see a picture of him? Oh, it's two guys. Okay, so white stripes and death from about perfect. Great. <laughs> Next. <laughs> yeah. So there was, but it was it was not an unknown thing to have a two piece band. But the way that you guys did it, with the I mean, on, honestly, with the exception of Godhead Silo, I can't think of of another band that really pulled off that kind of thing in the fact that unlike lightning bolt who i i love like there's actual songs and uh you know again not that lightning bolt doesn't have songs but i mean like like song structure wise like something that can be immediately familiar that if you were to close your eyes or maybe not be someone hung up on instrumentation when you see it live it's a powerful presentation but it sounds like a band and part of that was how you metered the uh, the signal with the multiple amps and stuff like that at first like you had like I, I, you really kind of seemed like you like mad scientist your way into into making it work from the outside uh, was that difficult to or off? or compensating for my shortcomings <laughs> take your pick sure sure <laughs> um I well <clears throat> some of it came out of uh, 
firstly, I, I want to make sure that I, that I, uh, I'm not shitting on uh, any of those bands either. Um, any other no, cheapies the, band? They're fine. Um, it's just hard to it's hard to re- it's hard to reconcile for folks that weren't there how hyped up some of these bands were. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Like sure, a, a quote sure. unquote next big thing, and, and right. that's what we're talking about. We're not. Right. I actually quite like a lot of those bands. It's not a big deal. Like we're not like talking trash. Let's let's be explicitly yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, well, and I, I just to touch on that really quickly <laughs> again. It's one of the funny things that when you when we would get compared to another two piece band, it was rarely Lightning Bolt, who they are a different band than we are for sure. But I, I'm a big fan. But. Uh, uh, we would never get compared to them, which seemed strange to me, given that like just sonically we had the most in common with yeah. them than than most you know of the other two piece bands that were big at the time. I, I don't know, it's, it's bizarre, but I uh, I will never understand uh, the minds <laughs> of people who there's only one or two allowable music or review. I, I, it's really bizarre. It's yeah, really yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's sort of like a, sometimes it feels like there's like a, a magic eight ball. That just has like musical comparisons, and you just oh yeah, yeah, shake yeah, it yeah. Up. sure, <laughs> sure, absolutely. <laughs> um, sorry, I lost the topic. Uh, no, no, okay. So we're talking we're, about yeah, big business as a two piece. You you got together specific, like the girthy tone. That oh you, right, that you um, brought in, uh, and the reasons why I was what I was, and the rationale behind for. it. Yes, right, yes. yes. Um, yeah, well, it, it kind of came from deciding that we were going to be a two piece. I mean, I was, I was interested in having a lot of, having a big loud sound, uh, anyway, but if it was just going to be the two of us, it might as well be more stuff that's louder with different signals that I can try to, you know, put together, try to mix into a, a, a larger sound. Um, uh, and so that's what I did, you know, and I didn't, at the time, I didn't have a whole lot to work with or a lot of money to spend on stuff. So it was a lot of stuff that I did have laying around in various states of disrepair that I had to, you know, try to <laughs> right. make work. And a lot of times it didn't work and it was a real pain in the ass for a lot of years, like, you know, troubleshooting that kind of rat's nest of, and in fairness, I'm not the most organized person where that stuff is concerned um but yeah it was just you know it wasn't until many years into it that i kind of had the means to be able to just kind of you know focused more on a little more on quality than quantity that that i uh i feel pretty happy with where i'm at now i guess um but yeah it was just kind of different stuff just kind of piecing stuff together and figuring out what worked and um, what sounded cool and what was just kind of too much and sounded like garbage. And um, and then kind of the last few years, we've been incorporating some different like samples and Soup looping and, and yeah, lots stuff of loops. like that. Yeah, so yeah, totally. I've had to kind of figure some of that out, too. I've gotten a lot more pedal-centric in the last few years where... Um, like in the whip and stuff, I didn't... You know, I think I just used... Boss Super Overdrive pedal, and that was it. And that's yeah. all I used for quite some time in big business in the beginning, too, just with more amps. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just kind of started collecting stuff or wanting, I wanted more and <laughs> trying to f- fulfill the the oral vision in my head. You had gas, um, buddy. Gear acquisition yeah. syndrome. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> Is there a group? Is there a group I can... I can check in with. <laughs> it should be you got gas. G. Is it called reverb.com? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. It should be. That's like that's like what that site is. Uh, so right. So so you you do this, it works. It's um you know, obviously Cody Cody's a beast of a drummer and indeed. You know, you you take on the road. You make you make that first record. And it, you know, it's, it's, things were moving pretty quick. Like there wasn't much of a gap, it seemed, between the first record and the second record. And again, maybe that's my personal time dilation field. Um, it was a couple, a couple years. years, maybe something like one yeah, of those. Yeah, it was. It was. We moved to Los Angeles from Seattle in 
in between those records. Right. Okay. So, and, and of course, what we're talking about now uh, is the gulf between the, the first and the, and the second record, mm-hmm. and you relocated as a band. We you relocated, relocated, which is the fact that which is to say, at the time, it's you know the two dudes in the band relocated. But I mean, the band pulled up stakes and and moved moved south. So we this did. is it was a what was a head for the shallow it was like what two thousand five. And here come the waterworks, like 2007, like two years later, something along those lines. That seems about right. Uh, I think we, oh, well, yeah, 2000, something 2006, like that. 2006, 2007, okay. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. So you move down to Los Angeles. Here come the waterworks. It has uh, Hydrahead uh, does that one again. And you got Dave Scott Stone that does some yes. like, guitars, some uh, keyboard stuff along those lines it's very it's very tasteful it's very it's not like <laughs> guitar Thank heavy you. or anything along those lines like it, it wasn't like a it, it, was, it was very still a bass dominant band but you start expanding the uh the crayon box right like you go from like a 32 sure. color crayon box over to a 64 color yeah. crayon box uh and then and then david dave scott Stone did some touring with you guys as well I remember because well, I was there. He did, yes, there was just one. It was the, it was the trip that we made to record the record, and he played. I think it was like five shows or something, because we just played like a and string two of them were in one in to, one day. That was the San Francisco Oakland show, if I, if I remember correctly. Is that right? I don't yeah. remember that. No, we no, played be, two shows in a day. We uh, yeah, it was a uh, hemlock. For a matinee, and then everyone pulled up stakes, including a couple people from the first show, and went to Oakland uh, to the Uptown. If I, I might be remembering that wrong, but that's, huh. that seems right. Maybe I don't. Yeah, I can't. I don't remember. Well, I remember because it was um, it was a ballsy, aud- audacious young man move for sure. I was like, yeah, fuck it, we're gonna do two shows. <laughs> like, why do? Yeah. That? Like, why would you do that? It's that's, it's silly. It's foolish at any age, really. <laughs> yeah, it's like two shows. Christ. <laughs> yeah. I can't even remember that it happened, so it's not even good for a story. So I, I just it's not, checked. It's it not was, worth, it worth shit. It, it was Saturday, August 20th, and 2006, and it, it was indeed. It was a Hemlock and the Uptown. Okay. So well, there you go. All right. That's a real-time fact check, everybody. Kudos to us. <laughs> kudos to doing weird shit because he wants to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Dave, Dave does that, that tour with you guys and you record the record. Uh, walk me through from there. Obviously, some, some, other, some other things are happening as well. Uh, at some point, you s- start to work with Toshi. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to remember the timeline. Is that about when the Melvin stuff happened? No, we had moved down. We moved down to Los Angeles, knowing that we were in the Melvins. It was earlier than that. Okay, again, sorry. I, yeah. I'm sorry. My time no, was all okay. screwed up. Um, so. I think it was like 2005. We um, head for the child came out, and then we we had. I think we had already planned to move down to Los Angeles because there was a bar, the Cha Cha Lounge in Seattle, was opening up a Cha Cha Lounge in Los Angeles, and a bunch of people we knew were moving down to LA to open the new bar and work at the new bar. And so we had, we had jobs lined up when we came down and we had, uh, you know, um, and then the Melvins asked us if we would be interested in playing. And then we came down later that year in 2005 and, uh, flew down to try it out, you know, to practice with them and see if it was going to work. And it's, right it was going to work so then um we moved down the pretty much the beginning of the year 2006 and did a bunch of i think we went on tour at time of fire right away like in february of that year for a, a pretty long time and then we came back and started doing Mel- practicing with melvin's and then recorded waterworks that summer in the summer of 2006 and then went on our first tour with Melvin's right after we recorded that record for three months. This insane tour. We toured everywhere. It was just the U.S. for three three months. 
It was. I remember it was a really long tour, and you were doing. It was. It was nuts. It was a whole season, <laughs> and it was. And you were doing a big business set and a Melvin set too. If I remember, we were. Like, right? Yes, we were doing two sets. We were opening it as as big business, and then for that tour, it would just go right into the Melvin set. They would come out and play. Um, uh, another Fourth of July is ruined. Or? Correct. Yeah, Look at yeah. the memory on Conan. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, so that they would come out and they would play that with us, and that would be our last song and kind of the beginning of the Melvin set. And then so we would just keep playing. So it was, yeah, I remember like a couple months into that tour, I think Cody and I were pretty burnt. Um, and uh, I don't know if we were grumbling about it or just like, you know, showing signs of wear and tear. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And, and, and Buzz came in and he's like, I just want you to know I really appreciate you guys and I hope this isn't too and we're like, no, it's cool, it's fine. It's just you know, it's like it's just a like it's let's a try not to let's try not to do this again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least for not for three months, you know, it was it was a lot. Like, I mean it was ambitious. Shorter runs, yeah. <laughs> I mean and not not just for us either, you know, it was, it's just and that's an ambitious thing to do for any band playing one set, you know. It, it, it was it was a lot. It was it was a it was definitely a trial by fire it was, it was pretty pretty intense but it was good it was it was a lot of fun i mean i wouldn't trade it it was long enough though that like like our girlfriends came and visit us visit, visited <laughs> us <laughs> so they remember like, what you looked like, like yeah <laughs> no 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 like multiple times like oh, more than shit. once okay gotcha all right i'm like you know and it, and it had been a long time since we had, it was just it was pretty wild um anyway yeah so that uh so that's kind of how that that happened, and then after that, once we started touring with Melvins, um, and recording, I guess we were recording a record then too that year. That would have been yeah, that so would have we been a senile animal. Yeah, so we were, right? that's right. So we recorded senile animal like basically early in the summer, and then <clears throat> recorded our uh, waterworks later in the summer. And then did that three month tour. That was a really busy year. A busy year goddamn for us. year, we were, dude. That, that's a busy decade intense. for some bands. I mean, yeah, that's like a pretty busy year. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't a lot of down. Like, yeah, we got back from the High on Fire tour. Immediately started practicing with those guys, and you know, making a record, putting a record together, and then recording it in short order. Yeah, it was pretty intense. I was I, I learned a lot about getting a lot done in a short period of time that year for sure. Yeah, and so, and that record, which by the way, that's actually one of my favorite Melvin's records. Like that's like a thing oh, for me. Like I, I listen to that one all the time. I talk about it all the time. Uh, yeah, and and it's cool because it's it's not just different because you and Cody are on it, but like the there's. I mean, I think that's one of the first ones that have like harmonies, like strong harmonies too. Like you know, there's that one song's got hand claps and stuff, and, and I remember hearing I'm like, oh fuck, it's awesome, like great this is this is this is this is exactly what i hope this would be it was it was uh it was really cool to see like i was very proud of you guys oh thank you yeah it was it was a, that was a really really fun record to make um those guys really gave us um a lot of free reign and a lot of freedom and encouraged us to spread our wings as it were you know like just to yeah. to try things you know to not be afraid to well, you know, Buzz would often, you know, he'd like, well, how would you do it? How would you finish this song? Or, you know, how would you, what would you do here? And he'd, he'd like sincerely, you know, wanted to know. And he'd a- yeah, to- he'd ask with sincerity because he, he believes in, you know, the collaboration of of everyone. And it, he believes in what people can bring to the table, you know. And uh, so, yeah, it was cool because it was, we, I, I, it was fun. You know, it was fun to be able to do stuff with um, people who knew what they were doing, and 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 Toshi recorded the record, and that was the, our first. It was your first of, time working yeah. with him, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, working with him and hanging out with Toshi, and um, yeah, it was it was it was a really. I have a lot of fond memories of recording that record and just you know trying some stuff, and like we we get done with the song, like wow, we did we did a thing. That was a pretty you know that's. A, that's pretty cool. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, at what point did it? Did it? Did it? Was there? 
how long did it take you to kind of get out of your head about it? Like, was it something where, because I know that you were a fan before you you played, like, did, mm-hmm. did it come pretty easily just to be like, all right, fuck it, we're doing this, cool. Or did it, like, take a second to be like, wow, what, what's going on right now? Um, you mean the whole the whole thing? Like, yeah, just, just like just being, being in the Melvins and be, stuff? Being or? in the Melvins, yeah. you know, making the record, being on the three-month tour. <laughs> No. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it was it was a lot of stuff, but um, it's a lot of change all at once, and exciting. It was a lot of change. A lot of change. It was. It was a whole lot of change all at once. Um, moving into a new place and doing new stuff, and basically having a new job, you know, a new career, like in this other band or whatever. Like, I never, you know, up until then, I'd never really been paid for. <laughs> Being a musician, you know, not you know, not in a real sense. No, you know, no, no. I, I know exactly what you mean. It's just it's like, I haven't been paid so much as right. I, <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Believe me. Um, uh, I've been paid, but I haven't been compensated. Com- I yeah, guess exactly. you know, I haven't, yeah. hadn't been compensated. There you go. Perfect. And so you know, it was it was cool to like be. I mean, we were touring a lot, and we were certainly busy. We were. It was it was, uh, and is a full time job. But but uh, um. Yeah, it was just kind of like, it was a lot of stuff, it, you know, obviously, like you said, I, I was a huge Melvin's fan. Uh, you know, they were kind of what, they were my it band when I was a kid, for sure. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of um, us. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, that was, a, it was totally a big deal to get a call from Dale asking us, that, what would, so what would you, co- Cody, think about being in the Melvin's? Like, oh. Oh, I'll think about it. You know, <laughs> yeah, let me get back to you. Yeah, <laughs> I'll call you back. Um, I had known Dale previous. I, you know, to to that, um, I, had, I, I, I was a uh, his wife is is a very dear old friend, and so I, I had gotten to know Dale through her, um, and so it wasn't like a bunch of, you know, some sort of. Uh, we were cool about it. Yeah, there was some, <laughs> it there was some familiarity. It wasn't, there, there was yeah, some yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't. It's not. To, it wasn't totally weird. Um, and from the get go, they they always were very uh, supportive of us, like both as big business and as new members of the Melvins. You know, to just yeah, I think that's, a, a lot that's, a, like, that's an important thing to mention because they were very much wanting you to continue your band and continue doing your thing in addition to this. It wasn't like, oh, we're sublimating you to our will in any way, shape, or form. No. No, no, no. I, uh, no, I mean... It was a it was, partnership, was, not necessarily a merger. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that, that's, I think that's accurate. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, so that made it kind of... And maybe that's part of what made it uh, um, made it feel a little looser, or, or you felt like you had that freedom just because it wasn't like we still had big business, or I don't know. Um, you know, I learned a lot from those guys for sure, um, just about songwriting and just kind of like doing it, you know, not like spending a lot of time futzing around with, you know, just kind of like, don't bore us, get to the chorus style, you know, not, not that's. But just, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just not to be overthinking things. Just like, here's a song. Let's do it. Like, well, what right. if we do this? We'll try it. You know? And then you'd try it. And then you'd know if it worked or not. And it then you just kind of move on. It was just, on, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of those things, especially with that first record, it was, you know, we we worked out, we practiced a lot, you know, before we went into the studio. And so all those, like, playing-wise, you know, musically, all those songs were pretty, were all very ready to go. Um, and then, like, Lyrically and vocally, it was pretty loose. Like, the, I, you know, I don't, Buzz, like myself, um, maybe more so, but I, I'm really bad at, I don't write lyrics in advance. I, I'm, you know, I start with music and lyrics come later. Um, and I think Buzz is pretty much the same. Um, and so, you know, we had all this music and then we we went to record and it was just kind of a lot of, some songs had some, you know, kind of vocal melodies, but we were writing a lot of the stuff like in the studio or, you know, in the days going into the studio. So a lot of, like, musically it was all kind of realized, and then, like, a lot of the vocals and overdubs and, and stuff, too, or, you know, all the little, the doodads, you know, um, kind of came alive in the studio, and that was kind of the really, the real fun part, I thought, was 
getting to kind of add everybody getting to add their their bullshit. <laughs> <You know? laughs> no, totally. But the stuff that like makes it a record, like uh, the stuff yeah, that, yeah. And it was fun. You know, it was really fun to do. It. Like the feeling was like when you do something, you try something. Like there was definitely a, like you felt like it was appreciated or that it was um, that it was good. You know, there was the, the vibe was up. I guess. So we, certainly, I, I can't believe I've never asked this to either Toshi or Dale. But like when you guys were doing basics, were like how did you track the two drum sets? Um, they I tracked mean, them live, tape-op, I believe. But, you know, I mean, fuck it. <laughs> no, I mean, they. You mean like did they play at the same time? Yeah, like or, it, or just was yeah. it in the same room? Was it like all in the same? Yes. You know, ah, okay. It was. It was. I, I'm. Pr- I'm uh, I could be wrong. I'm, I'm pretty sure that the, the drum sets were set up as they would were at live shows. Huh. And I mean, a lot of that is I just don't think it would have been possible for them. Well, I mean, <laughs> right. it, it would have been really difficult for them to <laughs> separately track the drums. It would have been, yeah. So we still and it wouldn't have made any next sense. door and we put, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I remember there being, I mean, you'd have to ask those guys, but I, I, I do remember a lot of attention being paid to trying to make, to distinguish the drum sounds, you know, to be able to tell, you know, um, and I can't, I, have, I haven't listened to that record in a real long time. I'm not sure how it's panned or if it's panned with there, there is Dale on one side and Cody on the other. I can't really remember, but it's funny. <laughs> I've had both dudes on the show and I've talked to both of these plenty of times. I never even once thought of asking any of this interesting stuff. So I was asked, always you ask the, the bass player. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> If you want the truth, ask the bass player. <laughs> so the that that big long tour that you guys did with the with the too bad for anybody that wanted to take a piss break between bands, uh changeover between bands. Mm-hmm. Uh after that you got Waterworks that comes out. Uh you know, it's 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 people are digging what you're throwing down. I think that's about the time that you guys went on the tool tour, right? After that. It that was, time? that was our, it was our pretty much our record release tour. Yeah. We had set up to, we were, it had just come out and we were, we had left for a nationwide tour, a five week tour. And I think we were still in California and we got a call from tools, somebody from tool. Uh, asking if do you guys want to go on a 30 day 30 date tour in two weeks <laughs> like like we're on the like we're yeah we we have a tour book <laughs> we're on tour <laughs> yeah we booked it in advance you know like yeah um and so we're like well what are we gonna do like what, i mean that's you don't say if someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes. As well, I, I, Ghostbusters, it's a good uh, yes, <laughs> exactly. But it was still, you know, we had but this you had dilemma dates of like booked. Yeah, exactly. We you had, had dates booked. booked. We were like, yeah. Shh, like, yeah. And so we called our booker, and he was like, "Don't worry about it. Take, we'll do, you know, take the tool tour, and I'll I'll reroute the tour." And to his credit, he did. Like, so what was supposed to be like, you know, a five week tour turned into a two month tour um, where basically we toured out started our tour and toured like with not much of a gap to like where the tool tour started did that tour and then like hauled ass to like basically finish we broke off our original tour um, and then kind of took back up with the rest of so we ended up not really missing only a couple few dates I think we weren't able to to, to reschedule in that like same time frame so um, yeah that was pretty wild too also a busy year yeah and that's I mean it's nice that you're you know you're coming in hot right like you know, you're, you're already playing shows like you're kind of in, into the groove of it and then but then you're playing these shows that are I guess we'll go ahead and say that it's a slightly different level maybe Arena rock is what it is. <laughs> right. Yeah. We were playing in arenas. Yes. And that was our first, uh, I think that was our first tour with Toshi as well. Right. And so Toshi had joined on yes. guitar. And was playing, was playing with you guys. Yeah. So talk to me about, like, 
Tool, of course, you know, are, are legendary for bringing along bands that they like and that they want their audience to see, and are, you know, they're cool yeah. with that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this is very different than shows that you you were playing before. Like it's like they're, you're you're not playing in a major city; you're playing in, you know, the. <laughs> the the hockey arena that's you know two miles out of town or whatever along those lines. Yes, yes, yeah. I, and it was it was kind of a it was a um, what they call a B market tour. You know, it was, it was it was not the big cities. It was you know an hour outside Chicago, or it was like like you know suburb cities you know or just like green bay or or yeah. <laughs> um right you know places just that maybe aren't the first stop on a you know big arena rock tour or whatever um there was still an arena full of people it didn't matter that it wasn't you know a big city but it just kind of made it a little more surreal all, all together was that we're playing in you know some small town in virginia and like we wouldn't be able to play here anyway, but we're because you know we don't have any draw, and but we're playing in front of seventy five hundred people. You know, it was, it was weird. It's very strange. But I highly recommend going on tool uh, on tour with Tool <laughs> if, you, if you if you get the opportunity. five stars. <laughs> five stars. They treat you right. Uh, I no mean, complaints. And, and did you feel that like it went over? with folks like when you were doing what you were doing it went over okay like we we weren't explicitly booed or you know like every once in a while as you're coming on stage like a couple ding dongs in the front be like we're here for tool or whatever I was like alright that's fine like we get paid either way it's not for <laughs> just, we just got we got like 30 minutes you can go get a hot yeah. dog or whatever close your eyes um, and think of England whatever you know yeah but it was fine it was like you know people seem to fine. appreciate it we didn't <laughs> sell like you know gangbusters in merch or anything but we didn't have to sell our merch anyway we didn't have to carry our gear we drove around in an empty van for a month because they insisted <laughs> on carrying our gear for real they a couple shows in they, the, the, the tour manager or the stage manager said like, what are you guys what are you guys driving in he's like oh we got this van he's like you carry your gear in there I'm like yeah like, we're, we're, we're gonna carry it from now on we've had too many vans like have their stuff stolen <laughs> like, wow like so wait so you will just show up and our gear will be here like yeah just and so then we we just pull in like we would literally drive our van into the arena the you know garage door like where should we park it's like right here we like, the van our van would be parked right behind the stage <laughs> and we'd get out and our gear would just be in a pile you know on the side of the stage yeah. and then a bunch of you know union guys from wherever you're playing or lump all your stuff on the stage you have to touch your gear there's catering to, like all day long but it was two different there would be a lunch catering and a dinner catering Whoa. totally separate <laughs> totally separate menus um Dude. <laughs> and like everything like everything on your writer you know like you, you know you write a writer with hopes that a quarter of the things might be on there. Then maybe somebody every, might read it and you might get a couple of things. Yeah. yeah. No, like every, every single thing, you know, a, a bottle of booze for everyone in the band every night, just like ridiculous. Um, and we got paid well. And we didn't sell a lot of merch, but we didn't have to sell it and we'd have to match their prices. So even if you sold just like four shirts, it was still like, you know, 200 bucks or yeah, something yeah. like Big, that. Pretty, you know? pretty good money, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was... It was, uh, yeah, it was fine. Highly recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so after that finishes, then then what? You that's that's about when you guys started doing uh, nude with boots with Melvins, right? Is that is that same? Right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we pretty much got right back into it. Uh, yeah, making another record with those guys. And then um, when it wasn't that much further on that you did the first record with Toshi, that was the uh, uh, Mind the Drift, right? Correct. It, it, it kind of around that same time period. So, yeah. I mean, are you writing these songs on the road or is it just sort of like, you know, you get home and then like you immediately start writing or like what's. Yeah, we have to. I, I've never been good at writing on the road. I always, I you know, I don't know how you are, but I. Many times, impossible over the years. I've yeah, I've, I've tried. You know, I brought my 
recording stuff or, you know, brought a, uh, just had intentions of doing more, I guess. Like, whoa, once we get back to where we're staying, we're, you know, it was like in, in Melbourne's too, you know, we were staying in, um, you know, in motels or hotels every night. It was, that was, that was also kind of new for us too, like to be doing that. Yeah. Routinely. Not like crashing on people's floors and not uh, crashing yeah. on hardwood floors or whatever. And so, um, you know, so I thought I had this grand idea, you know, like, yes, we'd oh, I'd get back to the hotel and I'd write songs. But I was like, too fucking tired. Like who wants to, I'm not going to do that. I know that there's bands and people who do that. And I, I have, I don't know how they do it. I'm, in awe, but no, we just get home and have to, you know, write songs then. But well, and the worst was that you would try it and then, like, you know, it just wouldn't work. You'd be like, "That's terrible! Why? <laughs> Why did I, what did I do that?" Yeah, so, I don't know. The best, I mean, the so best I've come up with. Yeah, I, I, you know, I will, I will hum a little something into my voice memos. Yeah. You know, if I have a little something in my head, but that's, that's about the extent of it. I might come up with some like rudimentary drum beat I kind of hum along to, but you know, on some app, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just don't have, I don't have the mental space at the end of the day for, for that on tour. Well, you're in good company. I mean, it seems like that's kind of a, a thing that's very difficult for almost any band at any level. Like it's very, very rare to find someone be able to do anything rather than do something worthwhile. That's comes out on the road. Unless it's like turn the page or something. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I suppose under the right circumstances with the right drugs or something, you could get some stuff done. But I, you know, that's yeah. not. I, I don't have the circumstances or the drugs, so. <laughs> I, so I, and I don't really care to. So, you know, it's not. I'm fine with just touring is is a job enough. Right. So so nude with boots. Uh, what was different with that one compared to doing senile animal with those guys? Well, we all had our Porsches by then, and our <laughs> all resplendent in leather and studs. Usually and drove our, with the top down. Like ten thousand dollar ostrich feather boa. Um, <clears throat> um, what was different? I don't. Um, I don't know. It was. It was. Uh, we recorded it at a different place. In the first record, or no, maybe it was the same place because it was the same studio. Um, that was, I don't know, I felt like I guess I can't remember a lot. I, I remember that one less, I guess. Hmm. I remember specifics of it less. Um, because that time was really, it just got really busy i mean you know, yeah it's just, like when you think about what you what was crammed into like basically like a two-year period it's it's kind of insane man yeah it was it was, a, it was a lot of stuff definitely a lot of stuff um yeah i don't know i, I honestly <laughs> i can't really uh i mean I, I remember feeling kind of more i guess more confident or more um easier with with the harmonies and easier with the do dads and whatever you know that's the one that had the uh theme song from um was it like the shining right it's on there yeah it's like right kind of reworking yes, a bit. yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think that one was a lot um a bit weirder mm -hmm. it felt like like um i think buzz kind of a lot of the songs he had were specifically that song in particular he was that was like i think he wanted to set a tone with uh with that one um and yeah that record has a lot of i i remember doing a lot of stuff there were things like go in and just you know make bass noise for like three minutes just make the weirdest noises you can for three minutes with your pedals or whatever the fuck, you know, and just doing things like that. And a lot, there was a lot of experimentation on that one. A lot of, a lot of kind of real weird goofing around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, it's, it's, you know, it's a solid record still. And there's also, I mean, like suicide in progress is a pretty killer song. Like there, there's a bunch of, like, it's kind of a sleeper. I feel like in the, in the pantheon, like, and it also, it comes out kicking, but it's, I mean, literally, I think the first song is called The Kicking Machine, right? But it's, it's, right. there's, yeah, there's some weird moody stuff that happens in there. It's a, it's an interesting record. 
Yeah, I, I haven't listened to that one in a long time either. Um, but yeah, it was definitely moodier is a good good descriptor of that of that record. I think. So talk to me then about uh, you got Toshi like in the band at that point. You you make the the Mind the Drift record. What were you? What were you doing with that one? Because I feel like the feel on that one's like very different. Uh, it is first different. two records. I think we were trying to. There's <laughs> there's a really good review that somebody sent me of that record. Um, and the reviewer described it as it's like the Beach Boys trying to like play Queen songs and. Like if the, if the Beach Boys were doing some like weird like metal rock opera or something, <laughs> but they, but they, but they didn't quite nail it. And I, and, and I and I and I and I, I have, <laughs> that's funny though. And I read it in the first part of it. I was like, that is what we were trying to do. And then the second part of it, I was like, I disagree, ma'am. But um, but in hindsight, I I I agree with her more on the second part of her sense of it than it was we were trying to do some stuff on that record for sure. And I think that some of it was both from a personal standpoint, I wasn't in the best spot. I was, um, uh, there were some things in my personal life that I wasn't super happy about. Um, and just kind of, um, the studio we were, we were recording that record in too. It was in, uh, Burbank and it was, uh, who owned it? It's like, it was like, Dwight Yoakam's not Dwight Yoak, who was it? I can't remember who it was somebody's studio and this guy ran the ran the studio, but it was just it was more of a warehouse that they had professional gear that was in various states of disrepair. Mm. And there was just a lot of technical difficulties when making that record. Like a lot of stops and starts, like, oh, this channel doesn't work. Now we have to wait for this to get fixed, or like it was a lot of shit like that where um there's there's a ghost hum for some reason and I can't get rid of it so we'd have to spend like two hours figuring out what was making your ground hum for you know what I mean like yeah just stuff like that that I, I guess I would say that the vibe was not as up in as it was not as party as, as it was not as party be. as as some of the records that I, that we've made for sure um, and um, I don't think it's a bad record at all I really like that record um, I I really like the songs and I. I think that um, I think we were not able to fully realize it sonically, um, and then there were some some parts that just we just couldn't realize them for whatever like some mm-hmm. some concepts that we wanted to realize that didn't for whatever reason quite get to where we wanted it to be. So in the end, I kind of agree with the lady's assessment that it was like the Beach Boys trying to make a rock opera record that didn't, didn't quite make it. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, perhaps slightly prescient, but uh, still hurt, maybe yes. slightly hurtful at the time. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, okay, and then after that record, uh, y- y- you guys do some stuff, and I is it... it it's like a couple... It's like a couple years later, or like like a year and a half later, that you uh, you have Scott playing with you. Uh, there was a Blues. he was he was he got in the band. There was a brief period of time where we had two guitar players, where Toshi and Scott were both in the band at the same time. That was the EP with uh, Guns the Quad, right? The quadruple single. Yeah. Um. Yes, that was yes, that was that record, um, and that. Uh, the timeline that I, I don't know that it gets really hard for me to remember all the stuff that's happening in that time time frame. But um, I feel like Scott was in the band shortly after Mind the Drift, not that long after Mind the Drift came out. Um, and then, but then we were really busy with Melbourne stuff. There was a whole year. Yeah. I think it was like 2009 or 2010 where we didn't. I don't think we did a big business tour. Like we just didn't. Like we were doing Melvin stuff constantly, um, and we just couldn't fit it in. So there was like Scott was in the band for kind of a while, like before we, um, 
the quadruple single came out, I think. No, I guess it wouldn't have been that long because Toshi was still in the band. So we recorded that, and that's that. the quadruple single was all four of us, and that was a lot of fun. We recorded that ourselves. Toshi recorded it in our practice space. Um, but at the time, there was uh, Toshi was having difficulties with travel, and there was it, logistically, it just became a little harder for Toshi to be in the band. Um, and so then we were just the three of us. It was this, we parted ways with Toshi uh, amicably, and everything was fine. Um, uh, he wanted to, I think, concentrate more on being a, a producer and re- making records. a producer yeah. and recording and stuff. He wasn't. He, I don't think he was super fond of touring. Um, not at like, <laughs> not in the way that we were. You know, the amount that we wanted to be doing it, and the you know how we were doing it and stuff. So, um, yeah, and then so then it was then then yeah it was a, we recorded the quadruple single and then we just we weren't able to really tour as big business for a while um and then it yeah so it was a couple years before uh battlefields came out with scott um because we've been so busy with melbourne stuff for a while yeah because i mean at that point there's the <clears throat> bright screen murder record uh, mm-hmm. There was a uh, touring that happened before and after that too. Like it, it was, it was definitely a big, <laughs> another big activity time. Like if I remember right, is that third tour EP around that time, or, or am I off base with that? The the for big business I'm talking about for uh, the vantage ones. Uh, I, the one has B stiff on it, I think, or. Might be. Oh, that's much earlier. That was like we were like, like still living one? in Seattle. Yeah, okay. there's, there's a shocking blue cover in the third one. That's with Toshi. The shocking blue one. That's what it was. Yeah, there was that a would... cover that I liked that I play for people. Like, oh well, what's this? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that would have been. I thought that was before Scott was in the band. So that was like post Mind the Drift pre quadruple single. Yeah. How do you feel about the song Guns? Like now, in hindsight, you mean? Correct. Or just yeah, like with with uh, modern context compared with to, modern context. Yeah. Well, uh, I I admit I have mixed feelings about it. Um, well, I don't know. I, I I feel like it's not it's not the context of the song at the time we wrote it. It, it's supposed to be pretty ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's like um, pretty clear. It's a it's, it's like farcical. Uh, like it's a big yes. Like, um, yeah. It came from from a night where Cody and Scott and I were hanging out at Cody's house, drinking and shooting cans with a pellet gun. You know, like uh, off of Cody's uh, you know porch, um, and we were you know guns are better than it. You know, we were yeah. just <laughs> drunk and being stu- guns are guns. Guns, guns, guns are better than everything else. You know, right? It was really, and then we just kind of we made the song and stuff. And I, you know, I would say like in the context of today, it feels more uncomfortable. But there were still school shootings then and gun violence at the time when we wrote it. So, um, and maybe we were just in a more irreverent headspace, or or um, maybe I have kids now and it, it's different, or you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I do have mixed feelings. I it was not something where I would like try to make it disappear or try to deny that we wrote it. Or really, you know, try to. <laughs> it, um, but nor would I, you know, allow the U.S. government to you use it for a promotion. <laughs> right. video, you know, like I, 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 right. it's not. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't. I don't really have a strong stance. I, I mean, I have my own personal views on guns, but I. It's not they are not reflected in that song one way or another. You yeah. know, it's, it's not, it's, it's supposed to be a pretty explicit and dumb song, I guess. Yeah, it kind of reminded yeah. me of like the, the fe- same feel was like Zardos or something, you know, where, where, where it's just sort of like, no, this is a thing that's, that's in culture. And like, this is like a big, like, you know, catchy nursery rhyme style song that, uh, you know, I mean, it's a yeah. ripper song. Like, it's, it's a great tune, but I can totally see where you'd be like, mm, let's maybe not play that right now. Yeah. I mean, I don't even, I don't remember. If, I, I think we did play it live, like, just because, you know. Oh, yeah, I saw you play it, it was... a, play it a few times, actually. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I, I don't think I'd probably play it again. But uh, play it live, just not for lots of different reasons. But one of the reasons being, with, I just don't feel like dealing with any backlash where that's yeah. concerned. Well, you're yeah, you're gonna get people that the buy in one way or the other and either way it's going to be well and, and if, if you're coming into it not knowing anything about us or anything if you just heard that song and you'd be like what the fuck is this like yeah, I, is this an I get it. propaganda like, what is what's I, going I, on here I, sure that's fine so <laughs> I'm totally okay with the people being upset about it people are welcome to be as upset about it as they want um, but yeah whatever so I don't I don't lose a lot of sleep over it. Yeah, no, no, and I only want to bring it up because I realize we never talked about it. Like, sure, period. And I was kind of curious because I'm honestly I'm surprised we haven't heard more. I don't I can't recall anyone ever calling us out or like dissing us in public because of it. I don't right. the, that I know of. You know, so I I don't. You haven't think been canceled people, because of it yet. No, we've not been canceled. I think. <laughs> <laughs> to worry about it. So, uh, quadruple single that takes us into the uh, what, what was it? Uh, well, up into Battlefields. Like before, Correct. there was like the single that came before that, but like uh, Battlefields Forever, which is 2013. So uh, at this yeah. point, like where are you at with with Battlefields Forever? So you did that what? Like uh, it was a. Uh, Entourage, right? Some, if I remember right, with uh, Dave. The yeah, that's correct. We did with Mr. Dave Curran. Awesome dude. Awesome Dave. Awesome Dave Curran. <laughs> um, yeah, he had been our. He had been a uh, uh, Dave had been doing live sound for Melvin's um, for some time, and then we had hired him. I guess he had. We hired him to do the record, I think, because I think he had been doing lines, live sound for us as for big business as well. Um, anyway, we we're good pals, and, and and so we thought he would do a good job, and um, I think he did. Um, yeah, that was another kind of hard record to make with same sort of like studio uh, technical difficulties um, at that studio. <laughs> it, was, it was it got. It got weird, but um, but it was fine. Uh, I think with that record, we were trying really hard to, because it had been so long since we had put out a record, and we had Scott, and he had been playing with us for some time without like putting Actually, out a full length record. Yeah, recording. Yeah. <laughs> so we wanted to like you know really try to try to uh, you know we hadn't been touring in a while. We, we we had to put our best foot forward, I guess. Or I felt like we needed to do a very good job with that record and uh yeah and i think we did well for sure and it definitely seemed like you know at the time i was like oh finally like this <laughs> finally they put it yeah they, well that's, this that's how we felt too <laughs> yeah, <it's good. laughs> i mean yeah not to put a final point on it but it definitely was a uh, it was something that it seemed like it took a while uh for sure to to do and so you got Battlefields, and then it kind of it gets a like little little hazy for me between Battlefields and Commander Weather. Uh, you certainly had a lot going on still, though. Uh, what's can you talk to me about the timeline between there? I guess it would be like twenty thirteen to twenty sixteen. Is that? Is that uh, I can pretend I can talk to you about it. I don't know if it'll be accurate, but I can. <laughs> um, it's all Rashomon effect, man. It's cool. Yeah, we were still doing a, we were still doing a lot of Melvin stuff at the time. There was some different Melvin's projects. Um, there was a month where Melvin's, like, we rented out. Oh, a, a, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, where we rented out a, a separate rehearsal space, and Toshi made a makeshift studio out of it. And we just spent a month just like recording stuff, or like Buzz would like have us come in and do like we'd record like bass and vocals on whatever, song. and just a bunch of guest people. And it was the um, what the hell was that? Uh, bass is um, loaded. Well, it was basses. That was later. It was um, uh, 
everybody loves oh, sausages. Everybody, lo- yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn it, I would have lost the and trivia was, contest. Sorry. Yeah, and that was <laughs> <laughs> that, so like for that was made in like a month, basically, with a bunch of people that has you know a shit ton of guest people on it, you know, um, of note, and uh, and then uh, during that time, we were also we we did some tours where we did. Um, uh, like all of Houdini and all of um, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Where you did, and then, yeah, and that was like the tour where you like played like even songs that maybe weren't ever meant to be played live. <laughs> you like did them all like as like a full set. Yes, and tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, we did that. There was a lot of like kind of projects like that. It was it was it was still a busy time for Melvin stuff, but it was kind of more scattered, and we were trying to do more big business stuff at the time as well um and we had a year where i guess we recorded battlefields that came out we did a lot of touring we toured with red fang and helms ali had a big tour and actually the the, sword. Uh, the, that, the tour with red fang is when i met my old co-host brenna betts was uh ah. at that show all right yeah. I, I didn't meet her that's when i asked her to be on the show that i take that back so Sorry, Take sorry to make back. it about me for a minute, but it was good. that was a good tour. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a good tour, uh, uh, and then it's, it's Scott had a back injury, um, like it was pretty serious. Uh, he was laid up all summer, and we didn't know what was wrong with him, and he didn't know what was wrong with him. Um, and it took a very, really long time to get it sorted out. It was a real drag because he was in a lot of pain for a really long time. Um, and we got offered this tour to go on tour with Macedon. And uh, in the in the in the winter, and we had agreed. And then when it got to the time to do the tour, <clears throat> Scott still wasn't like physically wasn't up like, to it. Well, he had just had his surgery like just weeks before, and it was just it was really a. Uh, a, a, a bummer just because he really wanted to go and it was just clear that he could like physically was not really going to be able to do it um anyway that was a really hard time and he wasn't able to go on the tour and we kind of weren't able to resolve the, the hurt feelings um as a result of that and um he decided he didn't want to play didn't want to play anymore and um which was you know fine understood it was kind of not really a ideal situation um so yeah so then we were, we did a tour with Macedon as a two piece but we didn't know that we were going to have to be a two piece <laughs> it wasn't like kind of, out and it just happened no away, yeah. and so it was kind of like we had kind of in short order we realized like oh i don't think i think we're gonna if we're gonna do this we have to do it as a two piece you know and and, and so we started recording or rehearsing as a two piece and did this tour as a two piece. And it was, it was good in that we realized like, Oh, that's right. Like this is how we started doing this and we can, we can do this. Like this is still a thing. Um, and while it was an awkward change back into a two piece, I think ultimately it was for the best and kind of reset our own brains as to what we wanted to be doing. And, how you know and what we could do i guess um and so it was kind of like a weird blessing that we were able to get back to being a two-piece and kind of get leaner and meaner um and then it kind of went from there well totally and that's that's something that's borne out by the fact that you know you guys have continued to you know have an audience and have have a run of records that people are are, are engaging with and, and paying attention to and you know and finding something in and that's uh you know not that that wasn't happening with uh with scott and then it wasn't happening with toshi but i feel like when i when i saw the first two-piece big business shows again which i don't even remember when it was but i was i just remember being like blown away i'm like oh yeah oh yeah fuck yeah this works <laughs> You know, just like in a in a real primal level of, of just being like, almost like seeing you guys for the first time. Of like, wait, wait, it's just the two of them, huh? All right, hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, and then being blown away, and it was uh, sort of the same thing, but you know, maybe with more 
the songwriting having a little more nuance yeah, or, or whatnot, but it, it, it's, it works, man. It works really well. Well, thanks. We're doing our best. So, uh, Commander Weather, talk to me about that record real quick. Um, that was our first record, Back as a Two-Piece. Um, we recorded that again with Dave Curran. <clears throat> and we recorded it out in, in Yucca Valley near Joshua Tree um, at a friend's studio. And that was, uh, um, we never done something like that before, like recording out in the desert. And he, he lives on this, friend Dan lives on this great piece of property. Um, you know, it was, we, we stayed at some Airbnb, like out in the middle of nowhere. And, <clears throat> um, yeah, it was cool. We recorded all the basic tracks out there, out in the desert, and then came back to LA to record. We did all the overdubs at another small studio, also a friend's studio. Um, and yeah, that was a fun record to make, just because we were, you know, back as a two piece, so we were trying to prove ourselves we were trying to be i think what we were trying to be was like the beach boys making a like a metal rock opera but there's just two of them and they totally nail it <laughs> that's what we were going for on, on that one it's good it's good ethos yeah it's very very uh very um, literary well that record we tried to, i don't know if we, uh, we tried to i had uh, it was the first record I, I we made since I had become a father, so that was kind of a, a thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there were definitely some some lyrical content in that in that uh, record that that pertains to that situation or just situations you become aware of once you become a parent. Um, stuff changes, yeah. Stuff changes. Life happens, man. <laughs> Um, yeah, stuff changes. Oh wow, that's, that's yeah. quite the epiphany. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I guess it was also the first record, like after it came out, that we were no longer in, we weren't playing with the Melvins anymore. So it was both kind of like back to our back to a two piece, and then also once it came out, it was like we were, we were back on our own. Um, and so we really had to kind of work a little harder to make up some ground just because we hadn't been touring as much as big business, you know, it was, right, right. despite the fact that we've been a band for a really long time, there was, you know, several years in there where we weren't doing a lot of touring or, you know, or at least as big business, um, or one as active. So yeah, we, then we kind of became a full time, uh, that became our, our full time gig and is, is to this day. So, I mean, was that more of a fiscal concern as far as, you know, just by you, you guys doing uh, it most, on your own, you get to, you yes, know, it was most definitely a, yeah, for sure. And it wasn't, we weren't sure that it was possible. We've been really fortunate in that we have had some really great bands ask us to go on tour, um, over our, career span um that has made it uh things easier for us where that's concerned or uh, we've had some great opportunities that have been offered to us um we're really fortunate in that way and so we've been able to keep busy playing in front of a lot of people and while it is still a hustle all the time um do you feel like we're we're doing okay, or at least we were doing okay until, you know, well, a couple months ago. <laughs> until everybody was doing terrible, yeah. <laughs> until no, until nothing's okay, yeah. I mean, it, it definitely seems like that. I mean, again, last time I saw you guys was in Madison to sleep, and I thought that was, that was a pretty good time. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like, I went with a went with a few people and uh, one of them had ever seen you guys play and was very impressed that is not someone that is easily impressed and I thought that was very nice that's what we're going for trying to impress the turds <laughs> think you hate everything huh well check this out <laughs> 
So, I mean, would you would you say that it's like a closed door for doing Melvin stuff anymore? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess I, I don't. Uh, we're. I mean, at this moment in this reality, I, who knows? Maybe a closed door for anybody who's well, playing I live mean, music. Yeah. Ever so. Yeah, thanks for the pin for my balloon, buddy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying it's a weird. It's a weird. <laughs> it is a. Uh, um, there is a. A bit of a cognitive disconnect where we're t- trying to discuss the future, um, yeah, which nobody knows. You know, the future in the means. midst of yeah, what does next week look like? Who the fuck knows? Right. I get it. Yeah. I don't know. I think. Yeah. I think it's going to be. Um, you know, Cody and I are talking about what, how to, how. How to proceed? What do you What do you do? Um, I don't imagine that people, you know, people are going to have their fill of virtual concerts and you know that kind of stuff pretty quick. I would think, you know, I mean, it's, I, I, had my, I had my fill of it before it even started happening. So, yeah. well, exactly. You know, I mean, like, <laughs> but that's me. I'm a dick. <laughs> well, I'm a dick too, and I, I think there's plenty of dicks. And, I, and even if you're not a dick, it's just there's only just so much non-normal you can kind of pretend is normal you know and and yeah. uh you know we've had people asking us like oh you want to reschedule those festivals for next spring in europe i'm like well i mean are there even going to be any venues that are still open in a year yeah. are, are there going to be any, even are there going to be brick and mortar rock clubs that exist yeah um I don't know harsh realities, but I, I, it's it's. Uh, I don't know. I mean, what a record store is going to? How is a record store? I guess I don't understand. I, I have my hard time wrapping my head around how people are, um, or why you would take out a huge loan to pay rent on a place that you're not going to be able to occupy for a year. You know. Like I don't know if you saw the tr- the troubadour here the in troubadour, LA. Is, is, I did, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I can't think of a more iconic mid-sized rock club in the United States. But if they can't, yeah, if they can't do it. Jesus if they Christ. can't do it, like who's going to be able? To, how are you going to keep? I I mean, I couldn't. I can't afford to pay rent on my house for a year without with zero coming in. So I I don't know. I'm, I I just I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around what it things could possibly look like in a year or I don't know. I don't well, mean sure. to okay, so a downer. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, I get bummer, it. Believe but... me. And like, I've been doing this show almost daily. Uh, and it's largely been as much for me as anyone else, but it's something that is a common concern and a series of common, yeah, you know, worries about the future maybe. But in that, I mean, let's say that there is some, you know, new normal that is not doing this for forever. You know, like if, if Dale gives you a call and says like, hey, you know, we're going to make a record. Like, do you want to, do you want in? You're, so we went all the way into the apocalypse and you're pulling it back. Pulling it back. Dale giving me a call about... <laughs> Doing well, Jared, some Melvin's jams next month. I'm, I, uh, I, you know me. I'm nothing if not tenacious. You know this. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I, you know, I, I never say never. That's that's where I'm at. I think I think anybody anybody who with half a brain needs to be at a or should be at a never say never. Yeah. Headspace. I don't know. I, I, um, even before all this, you know, I don't know what. There's no like bad blood between us or anything like that. Um, uh, we've just been trying to really focus on big business and trying to do that, and well, don't and have. Uh, yeah, you're making good work. Why wouldn't you? Like I said, I think that last record's one of your best, and I'm you know I'm a guy. Yeah. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I mean I don't know. I, we, who, who knows? Who knows what will happen? And, you know, balancing that and, like, being a good father and, you know, all, all the other things. Like, it's tough, of course. But, I mean, it's also, you know, I was pretty stoked that the Uncle Grandpa song was uh, the one that you that you sang on uh, <laughs> uh, the Bases Loaded record. And, you you know, there's a cartoon representation of you in a weird, yeah, bizarre-ass yeah. animation show. That's kind of neat. Yeah, it is neat. It's pretty cool. Surreal animation cartoon yeah. i guess they're called cartoons huh okay well yeah that's what they are 
<laughs> you can say cartoon. It's okay. It's not offensive. <laughs> uh, you know, I realize we've we, we've we've not talked about the carp documentary at all, which is another kind of heavy thing, and I don't want to immediately give like you know time dilation whiplash or anything, but I do want to kind of get your thoughts on that. Just my overall thoughts on it. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was cool, and I thought it it did a good job of telling the story. That's of course Bill Badgley from FedEx is uh, kill all redneck pricks documentary but it's you know it was always a bummer because you know it's it's so awesome and and carp was so vital but it's kind of seems like every time something cool was about to happen just you know you know sad trumpet yeah well i mean that's just kind of how things work and in the context of a band sometimes it seems more dramatic or it seems more more of a thing you know, that it's like, oh, well, this thing that happens in virtually every person's life happened, and ah, oh, it was the end of the band. And I mean, not to say it wasn't a big deal, but... Um, yeah, but you're, I mean, it's your kids, it, you know, like... Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly, thing. you know, and it's it's <laughs> like, I don't know, I mean, that, that band fell apart for lots of reasons, it, um, you know, drugs and being young and not thinking things through and whatever on everybody's part you know it wasn't like one person's fault necessarily it was just, um, I think Bill did a really good job I think the documentary turned out really great he um, he was very careful and respectful and um, and he's a friend you know prior to the movie um, yeah. so he's in a, used to play in a great band called FedEx that we used to play with a lot Yep. Um, Fucking love Federation X, man. Great band. Um, but he, uh, yeah, when he approached me about doing it, he said, well, think this is a good idea? I was like, I don't know. I don't know if it's a good idea, but <laughs> you're free to do what you want. I'm not going to, can't stop you. Um, if you think it's a, worth your time to, you know, and yeah. he spent a very long time on it. Um, uh, but no, I think he did a really good job, and I think the finished product is, is, a fair representation of, of some dudes, a bunch of dudes' life in a certain time. Um, yeah, I don't know if I, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but in in that documentary at the very end, there's some footage of the whip playing in Oakland. And is there? You, there is, and it's huh. it's at 40th Street Warehouse, and I saw yeah, it at yeah. one two three four Go Records in Oakland, like kind of you know. Bill was touring it around, and your people were like sitting on the floor, like I was sitting on a cement floor. And one, two, three, four, go records is a, like a block and a half from Forty Street Warehouse, but the entire neighborhood is like. I mean, there's an artisanal mac and cheese restaurant there now. I mean, like it's like it's very different <laughs> right. than it used to be. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And uh, you know, I didn't know. I was just like, oh, cool. I'm gonna you know see this documentary right on. Like it kind of took me by surprise to see that like there's that the whip footage in there and to be like mm-hmm. oh wow because it not only was time travel because of the show which was 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 that show uh but i was in it i was like in the background you know past conan mm-hmm. uh, and it was a block and a half away <laughs> in a neighborhood that also looks completely different and it was it was, right. it was it was it was crazy it was like one of the weirdest experiences i've ever had like even in documentaries that i knew where i was going to be in i've not had that experience of like almost like instantaneous time travel it was really yeah really wild uh, but i think bill did a great job with it. i mean do you ever talk to do you ever talk to chris at all does he do you have any relationship uh not too much um we kind of uh, you know i don't know we I, I keep in contact with him. I have to, uh, you know, to, we have carp stuff. We're yeah, there's carp still stuff. trying to, yeah, there's carp stuff gonna... I'm, t- I'm trying to work on. Trying... Yes, yes, yes. It'll come. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to be the guy to have to ask it. Fucking you, but... <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm actually, I was, I was kind of with, with this time I've been trying to, um, get that stuff together. I've been actually kind of crunching some numbers and I was getting ready to, to, to get that all that process moving um had a little capital i had built up in order to kind of get things moving and um now i'm just like one there's no you know nobody's pressing records at this moment and two i just not i'm a little apprehensive to like repress a bunch of records 
for people who don't have any money. Like, or I don't know if, you know, <laughs> or I, I, I don't know that it's the best use of my money. Like just from, you know, uh, right now, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure, you know, right. Um, I don't know. I'm okay. Well, sure. Sure. But well, yes, I mean, it will, it's going it, to, it'll happen eventually. It might be a little longer now than I had hoped, you know, just, yeah, because everything is going to take longer than we had hoped. But um, I mean, I will say that there is an appetite for it, and I've told this. Sure, to- but I don't know if I'm just worried there's not going to be any money appetite yeah. for it. Well, okay, like, so I, I'm I'm hungry for lots of expensive shit, but I you know, but I can't <laughs> right, afford it. Right, exactly. So. You got to keep it sustainable. I, I will say this, and I've I've told some version of the story on on the show lots of times. Like a lot of times when touring around. We're running into like younger bands, and a lot of them behave a- and act as if Carp was as big as like Smashing Pumpkins or something. Which I'm usually like, I assure you, that is not the case. Like that is that was not how that was. But there is enough, even in the in the limited way that people can like kind of find stuff now. There's enough appetite for those records, and they have lived on in people's minds for so long that it's a fairly regular occurrence where that band has not left the consciousness of the underground, even though the people involved are the same age as the rest of us, you know, just grown older. Yeah. And I think it's at least, you know, it's, it's a thing where there would be an appetite for it. And I, th- I think it would make money and I think it would make a lot of people really happy as well. I'm going to do it. I mean, I'm a, I was, so that's not me up the money. Uh, <laughs> I was just I, I bring up the money aspect not because it's it just uh, you know it's like making a big cake, big fancy cake, and then showing up and nobody's at the party or something. You know what I mean? I, I don't, I don't want to put a bunch it. of work. Yeah, yeah. I don't want it to be a big like put a bunch of work into it and then have it be real anticlimactic because nobody can afford it or nobody whatever. I I, I don't even know what any of that's going to be. I have you know. Exactly. Especially now. I just don't know exactly. I was thinking about a box set, you know, some stuff and all the bells and whistles and a regular repress. And I don't know. So that sounds we'll, great. We'll, <laughs> I'm going to have to, I'm going to, I'm going to sit for a, a couple months and see, see where we're at. And then, uh, I don't know. Do you like the multi-tier thing? Like the, the stuff that Numero did with Unwound was awesome. Like it was something where you don't have to, you know, you don't have to engage with this like high tier thing, but if you're someone that, Sure. Has an adult job and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't spending it all on beer every night? Then you can have this like nice, lovely thing about this band, the Mental. Yeah, Company. if you're not some unemployed pandemic loser or something. Yeah, I mean the pandemic can... does kind of screw everything, I guess. But I, I will say that it's it's been interesting seeing that you know people are still buying art. I, I know, and it's honestly, weird. I'm. I'm I mean, it's cool. I'm, sh- I'm shocked by that as well. I, I really am. I, I, no, I'm, of course. Like, I was I was surprised by you know, I, I was amazed at how many people bought stuff on that you know that band camp yeah. day. The, the um, I was because, and I know this. I know that like music people who care about music are aware that we are that bands are fucked. Or that bands don't make as much money as a lot of other people think we make anyway. Or that people people want to support music. They they want to support art. They want art and music to still be there when all this is over. Um, and that makes me happy. You know, I, I, that's it's good to know that like whatever happens at the end of this, people definitely will still want music. You know, whether they're able to see it live with two hundred, three hundred, four hundred other people remains to be seen but like music can still be made music can still be you know heard so there's there's still stuff to do it's just kind of a matter of you know how many other delivery jobs you're gonna have to have during the day in order to make that happen now you know (laughs) yeah i mean i mean that's real i mean i've kind of I'm, i'm 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 coming to terms with with whatever you know probably delivery job that i'm going to have to have in the next you know it sometime in, in this year. But the thing is, you Unless, don't know that. And none of us know that. None of us know anything, well, really. I no, mean, we like, don't. We, we can look at, like, the the most dark, uh, you know, obsidian black le- version of reality, sure. for sure. Or even, like, the mundane gray version of it. But yeah. none of us know, man. Like, I don't know. No, none of us know. And I, I don't, I mean, it's not, it's not the apocalypse. It's not, 
things will things will carry on and a lot of people will die and a lot of poor people will get fucked and a lot of people of color will get fucked um but these things happen every day and we're largely okay with it so um i don't know maybe things will change for the better maybe everybody will come out singing kumbaya i mean when you put it like that <laughs> Kumbaya in that voice or just in in general? Both, well, really. Well, but, Conan, I'm pretty sure everything's going to be just fine when all this is over. You'll see. I mean, it's going to be different, and and there's going to be those that suffer. No, nope, it's going to be, gonna be exactly the same. <laughs> it's going to be just fine. God damn it, Jared! <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> that's that's, uh, that's a that's a very deeply disconcerting voice that you're using on me right now. Just take this pill and drink this. Go to sleep. That's right. Well, I, I'm here. I'm here to say that all this stuff matters, and that it matters even more in in times of uh, trial and and duress. I agree. Like I'll go with that, man. I'm gonna ride the good vibes wave with you. Okay, good. And so, last thing, I'm, I'm just I'm just shooting low, so that way I can be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> so you can surprised. be super stoked if things turn out yeah, remotely okay. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know. So, uh, yeah, and, and and again, once again, this is where we started. I think the Whipper issue is amazing. I, I'm super glad to have it see the light of day. I think that uh, Josh did an amazing job with it. I really love the liner notes that he put on it. I'd forgotten that I contributed a few pictures to it, so that was kind of like, oh, yeah, Jesus. Ah. Um, yeah, again, that's just like a personal whiplash moment. But I think that that was – it's nice that you got it out there. And it's nice not just for the community, but it's nice for, you know, Scotty's memory and, uh, you know, just for everyone, just everyone to be able to hear it, to be able to experience it. I think that's that's a lovely thing in a, in a life right now that seems very bereft of lovely things. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I really do. I've gotten some some really nice feedback uh, on the whip record, and during this time, it is especially nice to know that it's making people feel good, or you know, bringing bringing some small joy to to this situation. I guess. So I, I want to thank you for spending so much time with me. I know we talked about it for like what six years, something along those lines. Like it's been. <laughs> It's been a while. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate it. It's really, I'm really glad that you decided to do it and that you made the time to do it. Last thing I, I just couldn't I, find the couldn't find the time before. Yeah, exactly. Now <laughs> it took a global pandemic to do it, but here we are. Tell you what. <laughs> Tell you what. Uh, the last thing I ask folks is the only canned question I ever ask is, uh, why do you do what you do? Well, the court order says I have to do. It was either 25 years musical community service or jail. And I'd heard terrible things about jail. So I have, well, I guess I'm done with the community service now. So I guess I just don't know know any other life now, I guess. It's like I've gotten out of prison and I just, you know, I kind of want to go back because I just can't hack it on the, in the outside world. Oh, man, that's heavy. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty heavy stuff, Conan. <laughs> Jared so Warren. I guess, yeah. Thank you so much, my guy. Huh? What? Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> uh, have a have a safe quarantine, and um, oh, you you bet, Conan. I'm gonna you, you stay safe and stay kind. Everything's gonna be. Oh, okay. All right, brother. Take care. All right. Bye bye. Ciao. There he goes, Mr. Jared Warren. And that's our show. Is this thing on? Been wanting that to happen for quite some time, so I'm glad we uh, glad we got to do it. Can you hear me now? I'm gonna throw the uh, the whip record uh, link in the chat box, and I'll, I'll link to it for the podcast and all that.
we go. You've been listening to Code of Neutron's Protonic Reversal. Thank you for it. Tonight's guest was Jared Warren. The show airs on Radio Nope, radionope.com. Say yes to Nope. As we come to the close of our broadcast day. Live listeners, PRF Radio Hour is coming up next. Radioneutron.com for the archives. Patreon.com slash Protonic Reversal. Get the episode sooner. One dollar a month will get you there. Signing off. Mr. and Mrs. America. All the ships at sea. No ads. No sponsors. No kidding. Anyone within the sound of my voice. Thanks everyone sharing the episodes around. I've got. Appreciate you. 50,000 watts of power. Appreciate everyone engaging with the show. I want to ionize the air. What else? Be excellent this to each other. Microphone turns good one. sound into electricity. Can you hear me now? Stay safe out there. Out on Route 128, dark and lonely. And as always, I got my radio on. Catch you later. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? to my top 10. I'd like to thank our sponsor. But we haven't got a sponsor. Not if you were the last man on earth. She was prepared to prove it. This one goes out to a special girl. But there is no special girl! It's the, it's the end of radio! The last announcer plays the last record! The last what? Leaves the transmitter! Circles the globe in search of a listener. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now?
not really broadcasting if there's no one there to receive. It's the end of radio. As we come to the close of our broadcast day.